everybody, video here for you today. Do an ancient history news video. I think it's been a week. First of all, let's go down to Saudi Arabia today. This is Duma El Jundal right down here. There are some ancient ruins scattered around the area here. Let's just read about one interesting find here. Here is Egypt today. Here are a few of the artifacts found here. It says Saudi Arabia uncovers ritual platform that houses Egyptian artifacts. A huge ritual platform and Egyptian artifacts were discovered in northern Saudi Arabia. There is just a look at a few of these artifacts that were found here. It says these artifacts, there are amulets and scarabs here, have an Egyptian blue glaze on them, and it shows signs of trading between this area of the world and Egypt around 3,600 to 3,100 years ago. Here is physics.org. They reported on this story also, six millennium BC structure discovered in Saudi Arabia. In contrast to prehistoric remains of the Near East, the megalithic monuments of Arabia remain largely unknown. These monumental structures made of dry stone walls still hold many secrets in terms of their construction, function, and chronology. But here remains of an ancient structure that go back maybe seven, 8,000 years. It says built in several phases from the sixth millennium BC. This exceptional monument was probably dedicated to ritual practices. I know people love hearing that some of which were probably funerary and commemorative. It says these discoveries, which appear in the Journal of Antiquity on June 9th, 2020, demonstrate a ritual use during prehistory and are a potentially symbolic imprint left by nomadic pastoralists in the landscape during this remote period. Some call it prehistory, but it seems the culture that started Egypt was spread out all over this area here. Prehistory, well, that's debatable. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to the Yucatan. I'm working on one video from down here still. The Mayans had a lot of places that not a lot of people knew about, but let's talk about an earlier phase of history right down here. This is called Grand Cenote on Google Earth here, underwater cave system. People have dove in here, found some pretty remarkable things. Here's a story from two days ago, cave divers search depth for the bones of the Ice Age. It says for thousands of years, the massive pelvis lay undisturbed at the bottom of a watery black pit, approximately four feet across and weighing an estimated 80 pounds. It had once belonged to a giant ground sloth, an elephant-sized animal that roamed the ancient Americas alongside the saber-toothed cat and the woolly mammoth. Pretty cool finds made down here. Here are members of the research team. I believe this is a cast of the pelvis from the giant ground sloth, part of the megafauna species that lived for hundreds of thousands of years. Then about 12,000 years ago, it disappeared in a geological instant. One interesting note about this find, they took up a lot of the bones here. It says, with the bones in hands, researchers made a marvelous discovery. The sloth was a member of an entirely new species. So pretty important find here, made in this cenote or this underwater cave. It says for thousands of years, the fossilized pelvis lay submerged upside down on the floor of Hoyo Negro, which is the name of this underwater cave to the locals, I guess. Here is the entrance to Grand Cenote. These were the portals to the underworld, to the mines. How did stuff end up down here? Well, also found in this cave were the bones of a woman who died 13,000 years ago. And I've done some videos coming from the ancient United States on places where these ice age megafauna ended up in caves. Why did a bunch of them end up down in the bottom of a cave? Well, do we have the same story from here? Why did this woman die 13,000 years ago, end up in this cave? It's all a good mystery. Let's move on. Next story, let's go down to Turkey. This is Lake Iznik right here. This is the city of Iznik on the eastern shore here. Reduced pollution has led to something becoming a lot more visible beneath the waves here. I believe it's right down here, right here. Here's a story from three days ago. Ancient underwater church becomes visible in Turkey thanks to reduced pollution amid lockdown. If there was anything good to come out of the COVID-19 pandemic, it would probably have to be reduced air and water pollution levels given that human activity has been reduced significantly. 
but here is that church viewed underwater here, just off the shore of Iznik, Turkey. Here are the underwater ruins. This church was built about 1600 years ago by the Romans. Iznik used to be known as something else you may have heard of, Nicaea. I will leave this link below. There is a video attached. I guess graves have been found here and a lot of coins with the emperors that ruled in the fourth century were found here, but pretty cool story. Let's move on. Next story, why don't we talk more about underwater ruins? I have talked about so many of them being lost. Is it dam construction? Well, some are re-emerging. Let's talk about a story from right down here in India. This is India today, Odisha. 500-year-old submerged temple resurfaces in Mahanadi. An ancient temple reappeared after 11 years in the Nahagar district. A 500-year-old temple had submerged in the river Mahanadi. Here's a look at the top part of the temple resurfacing due to low water levels, I guess. It says the last time the mastaka of the temple was seen was 11 years ago. Here's a little better look at the top of the temple reemerging. I guess flooding kind of altered the river's course. And due to that new flow of the river, this place got submerged about 100 or 200 years ago. And then it kind of reappears due to low water levels sporadically over time. After talking about so many sites being lost to flooding and dam construction, I guess it's nice to see one reappearing. One interesting find, they found an older temple that this place was built upon. Pretty interesting. Let's go on. Next story has to do with ancient North America, how this was a much different place 12,000 years ago and beyond. The animals, the megafauna that lived here. Let's read. Here's a story from four days ago. Ancient camelids reveal insights about North America's ancient savannas. Llamas, camels, giant ground sloths. North America was a totally different place 12,000 years ago and beyond. It says skull of camelops. A new study looking at extinct camelids, ancestors of today's camels and llamas, tells the story of North America's ancient savannas and highlights how past climatic and environmental conditions influence the composition of mammalian faunas. It says this study provides the first quantitative characterization of the ecomorphology of a group of large herbivore ungulates known as artiodactyls, which includes camels and antelope, and I hope I don't have to say a sentence as difficult as that again, from ancient North American savannas and how they compare with their counterparts from the present-day African savannas, such as the Serengeti. It says the lead author of the research from the University of Bristol, Noria Melissa Morales Garcia said, the North American savannas housed a vast diversity of camelids. In fact, camelids actually originated and first diversified in North America, where they lived for more than 40 million years and were incredibly successful and widespread. I think any study coming from this time period is important. Here's a video I made. The megafauna in North Carolina prior to 11,500 years ago. I made this about four years ago, but I think this is just an important time period to look into. Massive flooding, we lost the Clovis people. Sea level rise went up. The earth changed literally. And this is one thing to look into, these Ice Age megafauna that had been around for hundreds of thousands, even millions of years. North Carolina, North America was a totally different place prior to this, whatever happened. So as the analysis showed that while there was a considerable overlap between the ecologies of extinct and modern species, the majority of extinct camelids were most similar to the modern comedelin and arid adapted antelope with the diet of grass and leaves. This reveals important information about the ecosystem they inhabited and suggests that the North American savannas were drier than modern African savannas. But I will leave the link to this below. North America was a totally different place 12,000 years ago and beyond. Those are five ancient history news stories coming from this crazy world we live on. I'll have another ancient history news video for you in about a week. I'm working on a few videos, have some company coming into town this week. Not sure when I'll talk to you again, but you all have a very nice day.